I am uh, Thomas from DataTorrent, and today I would like to uh, talk about uh, Kafka and Yarn. It's a project that we started in the context of um, our overall work on a stream processing uh, platform. And uh, let's start with um, why we look at this problem. So um, our product is a, a product is for stream processing, and uh, a typical pipeline uh, that you will find is um, consists of the steps that you see here. Uh, ingestion data is uh, being taken uh, from somewhere and transported into a Hadoop cluster. Um, very often in the context of uh, stream processing, it's a message bus. Um, uh, it could also be files or some other source. Um, then some transformation um, analytics, uh, alerts and actions, and uh, finally data uh, can be emitted and um, being used for is being used for visualization, or it can be uh, distributed to downstream uh, consumers or other pipelines. So this uh, is a flow that we see very often in uh, different uh, applications in different spaces. And uh, then, uh, what is the infrastructure that it takes to do something like this? So, um, uh, Yarn and HDFS form the data um, OS, um, the way we look at it, and it can run on any um, on any infrastructure. Um, as far as we are concerned, uh, anything that is Hadoop 2.x um, is um, uh, will work. And um, the platform uh, for stream processing um, uh, should be scalable, should be high performance fault tolerant. Uh, those are properties um, that we would typically look for because they are in line with the underlying, um, underlying promises of Hadoop, uh, which was built exactly uh, for that, a scale out architecture on commodity hardware. Um, and then um, to uh, implement applications, you normally need uh, functional bu uh, building blocks that contain the functionality of your business logic, um, adapters, um, algorithms. And uh, these uh, things we encapsulate in operators, in uh, the case of our product, as an operator library that can be used to build applications. So this is pretty much what you need to assemble an application. And then um, you need tools uh, also to be successful, um, management and monitoring tools uh, for the operational aspects. Um, often it is uh, also desirable to show uh, progress uh, fast in a big data project. And um, so it's good to have uh, a tool, a graphical tool that allows you to configure applications or even better uh, to assemble an entire application out of operators. And uh, a third component that we feel is very important is real-time uh, data visualization. So this is the overall picture, and uh, this is uh, the reason why we are looking at um, Kafka on Yarn, because Kafka is a popular uh, source uh, for data. It's uh, gaining popularity, and it fits actually nicely uh, with, uh, with the properties uh, of our platform. It was developed by LinkedIn. It is scalable, uh, low latency. Uh, it can pretty much hold any amount of data uh, for a long time. You can say almost unlimited, and uh, it's it's um, it's a solid uh, it's a solid platform. So, how could this look like in a use case? Um, we have uh, customers in that space, online advertising, and uh, here's an example. You have ad servers that are uh, distributed um, across the globe. Uh, running in different locations, and uh, Kafka is being used basically to uh, to ship the e events into uh, into a central Hadoop cluster, where the stream processing happens. Um, so there's geographical uh, distribution, there's a high volume stream, and there's low latency. That is important. Uh, in the processing cluster, then uh, there runs data torrent on top of Hadoop. Um, you uh, define an application that is uh, defined as a directed acyclic graph. Uh, it contains your business logic. It does some computations. Uh, in this case, it does dimensional computation. It uh, provides metrics that are being used for to feed into a real-time dashboard. They can also go to other uh, systems. And it's high volume, auto-scaling, fault tolerant, um, and it works across data centers. And it computes um, it computes uh, dimensional data, so uh, there's a high amount of operations and a uh, high amount of data that is being computed that is available uh, for the reporting. 
So here, um, when we look at this picture, then we see that we are running on Hadoop. Uh, now what happens uh, with the ingestion mechanism? We would, of course, like to have a solution that is end-to-end -end and it is uh, fault-tolerant. And uh, here we're going to look at uh, how, um, how that works with Kafka at the moment and how we envision it uh, should work uh, going forward. So Kafka project, as I said, uh, Kafka is uh, gaining momentum. And uh, I think it's a very solid platform. It was developed by LinkedIn and a lot of smart people worked on it. Um, and uh, it's, uh, you, you can do a lot of things with it. Um, in the words that you find on the Apache website, high throughput distributed messaging system, fast, scalable, durable, distributed. That's all good stuff. And uh, so uh, Kafka is a very good fit for us as an ingestion mechanism. Our customers ask us for it too. They like to use it and uh, we integrate it. A Kafka cluster consists of multiple servers and uh, it's a pub-sub uh, mechanism. So there are topics, a producer sends messages to topics and one or multiple consumers can pick up those messages from topics. It's a very nice system because uh, uh, Kafka leaves control to the consumer, unlike GMS, for example. Kafka lets the consumer manage uh, the offsets from where to read, just like a file pointer. When you're reading from files, you can decide from which position you want to read. You can go back in time. Uh, you can keep your data in Kafka forever. You can go back and uh, read it from the beginning and can build a new system, can build up new state, decentralized. That's the vision that uh, was realized at LinkedIn. And so there's a lot of flexibility when you use the system. Um, besides that, uh, it is also fault tolerant uh, because it um, has a replication of partitions. What you can see here on Proker 1, there is a partition P0 and there's a replica 0. And on Proker 2, you see uh, in, the, in the white box, inactive, uh, the same partition as a replica 1. So what happens if Proker 1 fails, Proker 2 could take over and uh, can serve the data. So in, uh, in that regard, uh, Kafka has uh, all the properties to be a scalable and fault-tolerant system. The question that is not answered is what happens if one of these broker processes goes down? So yes, you have your replica and uh, the next broker will take over. What happens if that broker goes down? Uh, another replica, but at the end of the day, you also have to bring back up these processes and, and replace them. And uh, this is something that we are uh, looking for. So in a yarn cluster, what do we have? We run our application on yarn, and uh, our containers uh, run within yarn. Kafka is a separate cluster. The broker processes uh, are there. And uh, you essentially need two different skill sets and uh, two different uh, sets of machines uh, to, to run these things. Um, this is not um, uh, an optimal uh, situation. So what's the problem with it? Um, when you install Kafka, I don't know how many of you have used Kafka and how many product in production. Good, sizable, sizable amount. So maybe, maybe you felt when you set up a development cluster for the first time that it's not exactly easy or it could be easier to spin it up. Uh, you have to copy uh, files to multiple machines. You have to do some configuration there and uh, then you're up and running. Uh, it's not a big deal in general if you do it once, but if you do it many times, multiple times, uh, or different people do it, maybe it's not a Kafka expert, maybe somebody else wants to do it, then it's, uh, it's not so simple. So either you do it manually or you develop some tools for it. Um, it's also not easy to keep it running uh, because there isn't really any central view on Kafka. Uh, where you see the entire cluster with all the processes, uh, where you can make some configuration changes. And uh, what I already mentioned, when we looked at the broker processes, there isn't any automatic replacement when the broker fails. So this is something that, of course, large organizations, they build their own tool set for that. They have their ops consoles, they have their own collection of metrics, and, and uh, they have an efficient way to manage these clusters, but not everybody can build their own tools. Uh, and it's certainly an adoption barrier uh, for for new customer. Uh, so overall, there are some operational inefficiencies. Um, uh, also, when you look at the hardware uh, usage, there's fragmentation, there's underutilization, and um, there isn't really a, a, a leverage of an existing skill set um, as it could be. We will come to that. So um, we feel is an adoption barrier based on feedback that we have gotten uh, from our own customers. 
So why then Kafka and Jan, or how does it fix that problem? Uh, Jan gives uh, us the horizontal scalability on commodity hardware, as, as I have said, and it provides central resource management with queues, limits, locality constraints, and so on. And it also gives the framework for achieving fault tolerance and security. It doesn't solve that uh, for the application, but it provides the hooks uh, to implement all of the things that are needed. Uh, when, when you write your Yarn uh, application master, you uh, will be notified when a process fails. You have the ability to, to, um, to allocate a new container and bring back in that container whatever you have to, depending on what your application is doing. Uh, so that gives us the tools that, that we need to automate broker recovery and uh, with Yarn and resource uh, localization. Uh, we can also deploy a Kafka to the clusters uh, initially and auto-configure it. So all of the pieces are in place uh, to, to solve this problem uh, running on top of Yarn. And finally, uh, a goal that we also have with this project is to um, integrate uh, uh, or to come up with a user-friendly management uh, approach. Um, uh, some UI where you can see the, where you can look at the cluster, where you can see, oh, okay, all the processes are running, uh, it's good, uh, and maybe some minimum information about topics uh, and number of partitions on each broker, um, something like this. So an alternative to the uh, Kafka command line utilities. That's another um, thing that we have on our list. So. We, we started when the, our first approach was um, since data torrent is um, is a young native application we have acquired all the expertise uh, to build an application master building a yarn application master is not an easy undertaking uh, it's 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 certainly many lines of code and lessons learned before it works properly um, but we have gone through it once so we started out to write uh, one for Kafka specifically for Kafka, um, uh, managed Kafka uh, server processes. And uh, as we did that, we realized that actually we are doing, repeating a lot of things that we had already done. And um, it's generic functionality that would apply to uh, many other, uh, many other long-running services, uh, not just Kafka, you can pick. Uh, there are things out there, uh, HBase and other systems that have similar needs. So, and... Um, then we uh, looked uh, a bit closer at Slider. Slider at the beginning was not really there yet, but uh, it, it picked up last year and uh, it, it uh, was promising. As of the version 0 0.6, uh, it, it has many of the things uh, that we need uh, for, uh, to do this, uh, to do Koya. And uh, there is also momentum uh, to, to implement uh, things that are uh, missing uh, yet. So uh, we decided to actually go the slider route. If, 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 we, if, if we have to make investments, then it's better to make them into the slider project rather than doing them specifically for Kafka. And given that uh, most of it is already in place, we were actually able to uh, build a prototype without writing any application master code. Uh, it was working just by adapting the slider AM. So now when you see this picture, you have one cluster, which is all yarn. Uh, you have an additional application master, which is the slider application master for Koya. And then each of the Kafka uh, servers is now a, uh, inside a yarn container. And this yarn container is, uh, the Kafka server in the yarn container is managed by a slider agent. The slider agent is essentially a control script written in Python uh, to manage the server process. Also to bring it up and initially configure it. So, Slider automates uh, the deployment and configuration of components. They're called components. Uh, Procos are modeled uh, as components. Uh, it simplifies on-demand cluster creation, so it's quite easy to spin up a cluster for testing, for example, um, and tear it down, uh, which we do often. Uh, it's, it, it provides the generic application master for long-running services. Uh, there are um, slider applications for a number of systems already. Um, it uh, provides management of container failures. It uh, contains the code to automate the recovery. Uh, important uh, for Kafka also, it uh, pins um, processes to machines. If uh, you know how Kafka works, Kafka uses the local file system to store the partition data. So when the process goes down, it should come back up on the same machine because that's where the data is. 
uh, the only exception is if the machine is no longer there due to a failure, then yes, then it should move to a new machine. And then we incur the expense of copying the data from the replica uh, uh, to, to restore the, uh, restore the um, uh, partition replication. So we want, uh, we want uh, the uh, server pinned to the node across restarts. And uh, furthermore, uh, Kafka is, uh, uh, depends on uh, optimal uh, disk access. So uh, the best throughput in Kafka requires really exclusive uh, disk usage. So it is desirable in a production system, not in every test system, but in a production system to be able to have dedicated nodes uh, where, where Kafka runs. Uh, and where it, it has exclusive access to the uh, to the disk, and that can be done with the support for node labels uh, in uh, in the later version of Yarn. Uh, Slider also gives uh, at least one page that shows the status of all the components, uh, which ones are running, which ones have failed. So that's also good uh, to have. Uh, you have at a glance, you know how your uh, Kafka cluster is doing. There are areas for improvement that we uh, identified in uh, Slider. The support for anti-affinity isn't there in Yarn. Uh, it's, um, it's something that is actually desirable not just for Kafka, but also for other projects uh, that are running on Yarn. You don't want multiple Kafka servers on the same machine. You don't want multiple region servers on the same machine, and you will prob probably uh, uh, find this uh, in many other cases. So it's something that hopefully Jan will one day support, um, but uh, in the meantime, it's something that maybe Slider can, um, can simulate. Uh, it's, it's not as efficient uh, to do this in the application master, but it's possible. Uh, the agent API documentation could be a little bit more forthcoming. Uh, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to write the uh, slider agent, <laughs> the control script, and uh, the, there's some flexibility currently missing in component instance specification. So what you do is, I'm going to show that to you later, you define every uh, server, a Kafka server as a component, but well, really what you would like to do, you would like to define one component and then have multiple instances uh, with only a couple of properties different between them. So here's an example um, with the current version that we have. On the left side, you have the, um, you have the uh, application specification. On the right side, the resource specification. So the, on the left side, uh, you see two Kafka brokers configured. Uh, with a heap size, this is a very simple example here, and then the location of the, the Kafka uh, binaries, where to store the uh, PID file uh, for the running process, and so on. These are things that are consumed by the slider agent. Uh, and on the right side, you see what the slider AM will need to allocate the resources uh, to run each of them. So the usual things, if you're familiar with Yarn, there's a priority, there is a memory specification, CPU specification, and so on. So we don't run the demo here, so I have a couple of uh, screenshots just to show you how that would look like. So you have uh, the slider create command, and uh, that takes the uh, configuration files, and that's essentially the way to uh, deploy and uh, bring up a Kafka cluster from one place without any additional steps. Uh, the, it will copy the files to HDFS, and then it will launch the, um, launch the application, the Yarn application. And uh, you would see it in the Hadoop, uh, standard Hadoop UI as a, as a name, Koya, as a, just like any other application, application type slider. And uh, then the application master has a page that uh, gives you some information. So now you see broker zero, broker one, and you see how many instances are there uh, allocated. In our case, always, um, always one, because uh, we do not have the support for instance configuration yet that I mentioned. And then how many are actually running, how many failed. So now when we go to the next, uh, we can look at the, the, uh, the process uh, that is running in one of the containers with the pit, because we're going to use it uh, to kill it. And you, th these parameters, they were substituted uh, by the agent script. For example, the heap, sp uh, heap space uh, and, and other things are provided um, to the, to, uh, are substituted in the, in, the Kafka, um, in the Kafka server properties and the Kafka options. So this process, when you kill it, 
you will see back in the slider application master page that we now have proc zero, proc zero failed, right? And uh, there's no no instance running. And uh, after a while, then it would look like this. It would have been replaced, uh, and it was restarted on the same machine. And this is because a slider remembers uh, where it was running last, and it will make an effort uh, to uh, to start it there again. And it even does that across restarts. So when you take down the uh, resource manager and the um, and you have high availability, and you you all the applications were stopped, and you bring it back up from scratch, uh, the the Kafka servers will still be on the same machines. So uh, this is just a log snippet that shows the uh, detection of the failure and uh, the recovery, uh, along with the Python, uh, Python uh, command to, to bring back up the agent. So the status of the project right now, it's uh, open source in a GitHub repository. Um, the source is really just Python scripts and configuration. Uh, so far, we did not have the need to make any changes in uh, Slider or write any Java code uh, to do this, which is uh, nice uh, because uh, the previous prototype contained of many lines of Java code. Um, and uh, so uh, this shows that uh, for, certain, um, for certain services uh, that have, um, that have uh, Hey, basic HA support and other things built in. It is possible to use Slider uh, to bring them on top of Yarn. That was the, that was the goal of the Slider project, right? To onboard uh, systems on Yarn that don't have native Yarn support, but would benefit from running, running on Yarn uh, to leverage common infra infrastructure. So it works on Hadoop 2.x, uh, on Hadoop 2.6, uh, and it works from uh, with Slider 0.6. Enhancements have been made by the community in Slider already uh, that, that we are going to pick up and that we want to use for Koya, so it will be Slider 0 0.8 at least. Um, and uh, we are planning to make this a Slider application or a package that embeds Slider, because not all of the Hadoop distros today, they, they actually uh, they don't ship Slider, but it's uh, possible to embed it and then have an, have an installer so that contains the Kafka package, the slider package, and then you run it and uh, you, you can bring it up on your cluster. Um, we want to get to a first release uh, by uh, the end of Q2. And uh, then there are some enhancements uh, that, that we are also planning to work on. Um, expanded status uh, information through the slider AM, for example. So hopefully we will be able to show some more stats about each server. Uh, inside the Slider AM itself, uh, and uh, then explore Kafka uh, management UI options, because that's not really a Kafka on Yarn specific things, that's more a Kafka general thing. Uh, will there be a management UI? So efforts are being made um, um, uh, on, a, on, on Confluence side, for example, to build REST APIs, they have released it. Um, we are not sure what will be there in terms of uh, having a UI itself, but it's possible now to build a UI on based on the REST server. It's called a REST proxy that came out recently, um, and it's available as open source too. Um, and then we hope that uh, Yarn will uh, in the future support disk as a resource because that would make it actually possible to use a same machine for something else too, other than for the Kafka server, if the isolation can be guaranteed for the disk. And uh, yes, uh, better control over server placement. I mentioned that already, the anti-affinity. Uh, it would be nice to have that natively uh, in Yarn. And um, an enhancement that already went in that is still listed here, Slider 799, um, which Steve implemented in the meantime. And uh, that uh, enhancement was that once you have pinned uh, component to a server, it would uh, to, to a node, it would stay there forever. But that's not as desired behavior, right? If, if the machine goes away, then there's no need to, to try to restore it on that machine. It's never going to succeed, and it would be counterproductive because then we are back to the same problem. Somebody has to go in and manually fix it. So uh, what, what we can do now is uh, we can specify a timeout, and uh, if, if the resource cannot be allocated on the same machine, then essentially the failover kicks in and moves it to another machine. And um, the Kafka uh, replication would uh, populate the partitions there. 
So that was a missing piece to uh, get the Poker HA fully implemented. So with that, um, we can discuss questions. Yes, please. So that is a good question. Uh, why why are we doing this on Yarn versus uh, putting this uh, on Mesos? It's from our perspective, right? We are uh, we are a Yarn Yarn company. Our platform runs on Yarn. So when we go to a customer, then they have a Yarn cluster already. So whether that Yarn cluster runs on top of something else or whether it is uh, running on 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 bare metal. This is not really a concern, but uh, to run our own uh, product and platform, the customer has a Yarn cluster. So for us, it makes sense to also run Kafka on that cluster. The expertise is already there to do it. Yes, please. You said in production you run Kafka on dedicated nodes, right? So what advantage do you get running Kafka on Yarn uh, if you're running them on dedicated nodes anyway in the Yarn cluster? Well, you have the, the entire the entire capacity control. So so this is production, right? You are now already asking for production. So there yeah. is already uh, the non-production systems where you already get a benefit by uh, making it easy, right, to deploy so the a Kafka cluster. So. For the test clusters, you can share it with other instances, you but for production, you for you would run it on dedicated instances. If 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 you really need so so yes, uh, if if you really need the optimum throughput in Kafka, then this is what you would like to do, right? Uh, you you would like to have dedicated machines because yeah. you want to provide the isolation. If that is important, yeah. uh, it depends on your hardware and your cluster whether that is really a need what you have. But let's assume that's the case, right? Yeah. So you leverage still uh, an operational skill set that you have. Uh, people know how to configure additional machines uh, for, for Hadoop so that you already have in your organization. Mm -hmm. So now you can use those machines. You just declare them somewhere with node labels. These are the machines that I want to use for, uh, for Kafka. So then there is no additional work to copy Kafka there or to do something uh, in the event of failure, right? But you still need to do uh, data recovery, right? So if you bring up a new Kafka replica, you need to be able to copy all the partitions over there. And uh, how the likely is that like going to work? Well, the data recovery you need to you uh, the, the data recovery is, is something that Kafka does for you. So if you have a replica of a partition mm -hmm. and you bring up a, a new broker on a new machine, then it is able to pull the data over from the replica. Yeah, I mean, typically, like, so I was at Twitter for a long time, and we, for a long time on Mesos, we never ran any stateful services. Right. So only, and this is one of the re main reasons, because for stateful services, we needed uh, most of the time dedicated clusters. And um, so I'm curious how this would actually play out in, in large-scale production use cases. Well, you would you would have your pool uh, you have, would have your pool of machines, right? That you have, and you probably have a spare machine, right? Yeah. Or two spare machines uh, for if you have a large Kafka cluster for for brokers that fail, so that they can be brought up back up there, right? Yeah. And the rest is really something that is uh, delegated to Kafka, where it will repopulate the partitions and rebalance the uh, replicas on so those machines. The Koya project is basically uh, built on top of Slider. So what additionally does it add on top of Slider and Yarn? Uh, it's, it's basically like a plugin for Slider into Kafka. So, so what it will add is um, uh, um, probably a bunch of tools to simplify the configuration, the initial configuration that you do. Those mm -hmm. could be scripts, uh, for example, you, you have because you have to specify what your brokers are, right? how many you want, etc. And uh, then um, just the packaging of the of the slider application, right? Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, Kafka uh, management of different Kafka versions that go in, differences between versions potentially that need to be handled by the agent code. If something changes, right, in the configuration, or new features are being added that are relevant here, so that would be something that is part of the of the Koya package and of the scripts within it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Yes. Um, in case of you don't have any dedicated machine for that and you, you share your cluster with other application, um, I was wondering what could be the impact on the YARN cluster, especially on the scheduling part. Uh, for instance, the, the capacity scheduler or even the first scheduler could be uh, make it crazy to have some container that, that uh, lives always there. Uh, if you would like to be share to be fair between the different application, well, um, on the other hand, you have some scheduler that enable preemption as well. So some container can be killed uh, in order to put some others. So what else you? Well, it's long running application, right? Everything that we do is long running application. The streaming, the streaming applications, the containers, they are designed to run forever, right? Kafka containers are designed to run forever. So you really, when you when you configure your cluster, you need to allocate the the uh, capacities capacities accordingly, right, with, with your queues, so that you can have the, uh, the these containers running. So it's it's a matter of configuring your cluster. It's not it's not a, sh a short workload kind of thing like MapReduce, right? The job comes, runs, and goes away. That's the point, actually. So. Uh, do you think the, the, the scheduler can be configured to be um, to be aware that some some containers should be there forever and not be fair with the other? For instance, the first scheduler is working like this. So, so what, what what prevents a container from running forever? So, for example, you install, let's say, the Apache, uh, the standard Apache Hadoop uh, distribution, uh, that is capacity scheduler is on by default. So. You have a long-running application. This could be our application, data torrent is long-running application. You have other things like run HBase on, on, on Yarn or run Kafka on Yarn in, in the, uh, or run any other system that is designed to run forever. So it's not that the container is going to be killed because it is there for a long time. There's no time. There's no time boundary. There are. There are. When you look at the uh, support for long, long-running services in Yarn, there are a few things that have to do with expiration of uh, delegation tokens and renewal of tickets. Those are issues, but these are not scheduler issues. These have uh, to do with Hadoop security. So actually, Slider provides solutions for those too, uh, for shipping the the Kerberos um, uh, the Kerberos keys to the nodes so that they can renew tokens. Yeah. Remember, they had a lot of work regarding to Yarn to support long-running service. But the question is, okay, if you run Kafka, what you usually run behind Kafka to process actual streams? Do you have some recommendation in technology stacks, some failures that you normally see on this process? What is, what is consuming the data from Kafka? Usually, in your cases, yes. Do you have some general recommendation how to build this? negotiation between services yes. and the actual Kafka? Well, we have, uh, when, when we are using Kafka as an ingest mechanism, then we have, in, in, in our platform, we have adapters for Kafka. So adapters for Kafka that automatically um, uh, look at the metadata on the broker for the partition layout, create uh, partitions of our operators, multiple of them, their different strategies, how many Kafka partitions are consumed by one consumer, and then also detects uh, if when a connection fails, it will read the metadata again, find out where the new partition is on which machine, and automatically reconnect. So th those are things that the consumer needs to handle. But they live outside cluster or inside? So our vision is to, to that run, everything is running inside the Yarn cluster, so the consumer is also a Yarn container. Okay, so it's your ma manual, actually, efforts, as I understand. Well, it's uh, it, that that question. What happens if if a connection breaks to a particular uh, broker? That is not any different. Whether how that runs, whether it runs on top of the yarn cluster or whether that runs outside of the yarn cluster, you still have to take the same steps. You have to handle that connection failure. You have to find out where the new partition is and re-establish the connection. Thomas, may I add a, a color here? Yeah, uh, I'm the yarn guy. So uh, there were a couple of questions about you know uh, how you multi-share Kafka with other apps, and there, is, there are general questions about how uh, you run services on top of Yarn. Steve is uh, giving a talk tomorrow, I believe, uh, specifically focusing on long-running services, how they live, what are the issues, how, you know, how do you run multiple of uh, such apps and so on. I, I'd recommend joining that. Uh, regarding drives, it, the Yarn community were also considering giving, uh, you know, drive isolation and drive scheduling. So Kafka doesn't need to take the entire machine. It, it'll just take one or two or, you know, n number of disks, disks out of, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, 12, 24 disks, right? So that way, Kafka can run 
specifically on those two disks. The other disk can be used by MapReduce, stays high, you know, uh, what you will. And together with labels, we can also make sure that when, when the server, when the Kafka broker restarts, it'll again go to that same machine. Uh, so that should. Yeah, that, that's right. So the labels, use of the labels right now is really, uh, is, is really it's, it, it makes it exclusive. And there's, to some extent, a workaround to the absence of the disk resource specification, right? Once we have that, then we don't have that problem. Yeah. Does that answer your question about uh, multi share? Thanks. Do you run on uh, Kerberos? And if so, do you have any problem with it? So, sorry, I didn't get the question. Do, do you run on uh, Kerberos? And if, if the answer is yes, do you have any problem running Slider with Kerberos? So uh, our, our current prototype has not run on Kerberos yet, but we are aware of how Kerberos is supported within Slider. Uh, Slider's solution to that is to uh, deploy the, uh, the Kerberos keys uh, to the container so that it's able to, um, to as, uh, keep the tokens alive or the renew, renew the uh, tokens. Any, any other question? We have three minutes left. If you had one extra feature you wanted in Slider soon, which would be the one you'd ask me for? One extra feature? Hmm. <laughs> then I have to think if, if, if it can be only one. <laughs> one for the next one year. For the next one year. That, that puts the, pushes the bar even higher. <laughs> I think besides the core service uh, requirements, I think uh, something that we need to think about is uh, how to how to integrate um, status UI um, uh, somehow. The, the the problem here is the the resource manager proxy uh, is 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 one endpoint right for UI, and that is good. And that right now points to uh, points to the Sliders application master, and we can see basic information about services. But what if I want to incorporate some additional information there that is is not available? Uh, so uh, on my wish list, there's one uh, one uh, thing that is. Can a slider agent publish additional information uh, to the uh, to the that can be seen in in the application uh, master UI? So that, I think that would be very helpful, along with discussions uh, that we already had that perhaps you can embed widgets or UI artifacts as part of a slider application that um, can be rendered in in some form in, in the UI. So if I had unlimited wishes, that would be definitely there. But in absence of that, <laughs> I would say entire affinity and and disk uh, and support as disk as resource. Those would be the two the two next things. Besides, you know already, right? Instance configuration, instance level configuration support. <laughs> okay, far more than one wish. <laughs> one more minute. Please. Uh, is this approach supported uh, by uh, cluster management systems such as uh, Apache Mbari or Cloudera Manager? No, uh, good question. Um, actually, Cloudera, both Cloudera and Hortonworks uh, rolling out uh, support to run Kafka in, in different means. Uh, so. Our goal is to provide one way of running on Kafka that would run on all the distros. So uh, whether it's HTTP or CDH or MapR, uh, we would like to provide one answer to our customers how they can get Kafka uh, up and running uh, in, in, a, in a unified way. So, um, but we are working with, uh, for example, we are working with Hortonworks and uh, to incorporate uh, these uh, things in the future. So yes, at the moment not. But in the future, probably, yes. OK, any more questions? Not. So thanks for listening to the talk. And uh, please feel free to come by our table.
uh, we have a table in the exhibit hall and uh, we can talk more about this project and also about what DataTorrent is doing. Thank you.